do you have your clients, your colleagues or your boss located in a different time zone? Or do you conduct training sessions in different time zones? If the answer is yes, then this video is for you. Do watch it till the end and I'm sure you will learn something new. In this video, we're going to talk about three little tweaks about Outlook Calendar and how to track time and manage breaks in your virtual online sessions involving people from different time zones. So let us get started. Let's take Outlook first. Imagine you have an ongoing discussion and you want to reply as a meeting. So there are two ways of doing it. Either you can simply click on respond with a meeting. So there is a short reply button nowadays available in the newer version of Outlook which says reply with a meeting. You click on this and it opens up a scheduling calendar or a meeting invite for you. That is one. Another way of doing it is very simple. You can simply drag and drop this email chain onto the calendar icon and it automatically opens up again a scheduler for the meeting. Another trick that you can use is to pick up the next slot based on name of the day instead of the date. Have you ever tried that? Let's see. If I go to calendar and if I say let's schedule a new meeting, in this new meeting what I'll do is instead of typing in date I will say next Monday and I press tab and it converts it to date automatically. You see how easy it is. So somebody says uh, let's meet on Tuesday, you can simply type here Tuesday and Outlook will do the rest of the work for you converting it into the date. Of course you will have to pick up the time and so on. If you need to schedule a meeting with people from different time zone, you can click on the time zone icon to enable it or disable it and then you can pick up which time zone do you want this meeting to be in. Right now this is for scheduling from a new meeting in white. Let us say you want to schedule directly from the calendar view itself. Now you can see here by default I have set Delhi as my home time zone and you can see one calendar time zone visible here on the left hand side. Now this view is available on weekly or daily basis. Uh, in monthly view probably you cannot see it. In order to make it easy to have a look at different time zones up to three in the newer version and up to two in the older versions of Outlook you can add multiple time zones. So let's do that. Right now you can see I have only Delhi. So I'll go to options and under options I'll go to calendar. Under calendar I will go to the time zone tab and there you see I have put the name Delhi over here and then you can add a second time zone and a third time zone here. Um, just for testing I've added here Moscow and Paris time zones and I can click OK. Now once you do that you can see on the left hand side now we have three time zones listed and their relative time difference also you can see for example 6 a.m. in Paris is 7 a.m. in Moscow and it will be 9.30 in India in Delhi right so that's how you can pick it up and then based on the date that you want to pick up simply click and drag and select the time range from where you want to schedule a meeting so from 9 to 1 India time if I schedule a meeting it would be 6.30 for Moscow time and 5.30 for Paris time. So here you can check in what time zone, what will be the time for this meeting. So those were the three little tricks for scheduling a meeting in Outlook. So one part is done, scheduling. Once you have the meeting started, how do you manage the time within that? When people are participating from different time zones, it sometimes becomes confusing what time they are referring to. So what you need is a world clock to check respective times and also you can use the built-in clock timer within Windows to manage your breaks. Let's have a look at that now. The utility that I use is called World Time Buddy. It's not just uh, a world clock, it also helps you schedule meetings if you want to do so. Now you can see here by default I have added Delhi as my home time zone here. You can simply add places here. Let's say I type Paris here. I'll pick up France Paris and it becomes one more clock here. So 6 p.m. in India that's when I'm recording this video and that is 2.30 p.m. in Paris time if you see that is Central European summer time right. So India standard time versus Central European summer time you can see the difference between the time zones. These are the current times in these respective locations. 
And similarly, you can keep on adding like that. So let's say I add uh, Dallas, United States as one of the clocks. Now, as I told you, it's not just a world clock. You can also use this tool for scheduling meetings as well. So let's say, for example, I pick up a date, um, 10th of July, let's say. And on 10th of July, I want to schedule a meeting, um, let's say in the evening, somewhere between uh, 6 to 8.30, you see. And it shows me that for Paris, this time will be 2.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, for Dallas, it will be 7.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now, this is good, right? Uh, if you want to include it into your Outlook calendar, it's very easy. Simply click on the Outlook iCalendar icon and it downloads an ICS file for you. Click on it and select the application that you want to use to open this. So I'm selecting Outlook, okay. So you can see here, it has picked up the exact date and time zones from here. It also puts in text format so that people can easily see it. What are the different time zones involved in this meeting? And that's how you can send it. You can simply edit this title over here. You can go to the um, scheduling assistant to add people to it, you know, whom you want to invite. So I can add, you know, different people over here whom I want to invite to this meeting. So that's how uh, the world time buddy can be really useful. If I refresh this, it gives me the current time once again, right? And it's not just uh, Outlook calendar format in which you can export these settings. You can also get it in Google calendar output. You can uh, download it into uh, a text file if you want. You can send it via Gmail if you want and so on, right? So different options are available. Another good thing about the world time buddy is that it has got a mobile app as well. So World Time Buddy, uh, the same interface that you saw on the website, it's the similar interface that you get here as well. And um, in, if you go into settings, you can see you can choose from uh, 24 hours to AM PM formats if you want, or you have um, time zone names if you want to put them there or just the values, offset values for the time zones, you can choose that. So a lot of settings over here. And um, then you can see here I have Delhi, I have Dallas already added into this mobile app. I can click on the plus sign and search for a different time zone. So just like we added Paris on the laptop, let's add Paris on the mobile app as well. And there you see Paris is added as well. And similar to what you did over there in the desktop mode, you can uh, do similar stuff here as well. Just drag the selectable area and you can, um, you know, um, define the start and end time of your meeting and then click on the share icon and there you can choose how you want to share this. So maybe copy it to the clipboard if you want or email it directly. So you can choose a program or, you know, copy it to your calendar the way you like. Now, before we close this video, let me show you the last little trick. When you have people participating from different time zones into your meeting or your session, um, don't say that uh, we'll come back this time your time zone or my time zone because that ends up confusing people. Instead, what I do is I just start a timer on my desktop and everyone is on the same page. How many minutes are left? So what I do is I simply go to the Windows clock utility and there I have some um, ready-made timers made for me. 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes and so on. So I have set it like that. And what I do is I simply start a timer make it full screen and leave it there. I'm already sharing my screen. Everyone knows how much time is left before we need to come back. All right. So those were the few tricks about scheduling and managing your meetings or sessions across different time zones. I hope you will find them useful. Stay tuned for more such videos. I'll see you in the next one.